the folks who are watching video will be able to see this. Tyler, you've put a phone number up here and indicated you're going to have study groups on Sunday late afternoons. Do you know where you're going to meet? I haven't studied. I just wanted to get some feedback to see. You. Okay. But, um, it may be that you can get a room over in the library. Okay. Yeah, that would be awesome. And Tyler's phone number is 863-595-7732. Text him if you're interested. That may include some of the folks in the online sections too, which would be very beneficial for them, I'm sure. If nothing else, you can all sit around and either pitch together or pray together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The other option possibly might be Library West if, if we can't get a spot in there. Maybe Library West at the University. Yeah. Well, I'm sure if they text you, you can put everybody together. Yeah. You know, you have to have that UFL to access to their internet. Yeah. So unless you know someone goes to UF, it's going to let you borrow the UFL. You can't access their internet. I think you could go as a guest because Santa Fe students are allowed in there. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. And now, what would they allow Santa Fe to be running? Yeah. Well, they don't ever check that anymore. Yeah, like after 12, they check. Oh, always there before. Yeah. Anyways. I, right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you got to learn the system. Yeah. Okay, new topic. Right? How about consumer surplus? That's Independence B. Let's walk through one of those real quickly and the concept. When we draw a demand curve, what's that demand, demand curve tell us? It's decreasing, which indicates what? Almost correct. Perfect. The lower the price, the greater the quantity demanded. This shows us how many they will buy at each price. Demand curve. We pick a price. Let's say we pick this price right here. And it's $12, and we say, wow, when I look at the demand curve, that tells me people will buy 100 units of this product every day. Well, quick question for you. What if the price were $13 or $14 or $15? Less than what is demanded. Quantity demanded. Quantity, quantity demanded would decrease. Some people wouldn't buy this thing. But some people would. Some people were willing to pay $13 bucks for this thing, or $14 or $15, etc. Okay? So when we charge everybody the same price, some people come in there who would have spent more money. That's pretty critical for you if you're running a business. Because if you stand out there and you charge the same price to everybody, you're giving some people a gift. Because they're not paying as much as they had to. If you were willing to pay 15 bucks for this thing and you bought it for 12, we say, you got $15 worth of value because you were willing to spend that. But it only cost you 12 mm -hmm. so you got a surplus value there of $3. Mm -hmm. We call that the consumer's surplus. So we want to talk about how do we calculate it, and then more applications oriented, how do we go about trying to get some of that money from our customers? But do you really make more once you change the price? Because less people are. Oh no, I may I may not want to raise the price because I'll be losing customers. Yeah. yeah. But I know that some of the people coming into my store would have paid more money. Mm -hmm. How can I get some of their money that they were willing to spend? And we'll see there are a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. Okay. First though, let's calculate how much consumer surplus there is. Okay. To do that, we would have to take mathematically take the demand curve and extend it all the way back up to its intercept and calculate what that number is. Mm -hmm. This is the price at which nobody buys anything. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine for Grimm's that that's $20. Now the consumer surplus is the area of this red triangle. Mm -hmm. That area is the total Consumers surplus. So how do we figure out the area of the triangle? One half base times height. One half base times the height. Same way they taught it in the caves when I was a kid. Okay. So how long is the base? It's 100 units whether you measure it here or here. 
The base is 100. The height 20. from 12 eight. to 20 is 8. 8 times 100, 800. Half of 800 is $400. Your consumer surplus in this particular graph is $400. Mm -hmm. We doing okay so far? Mm -hmm. okay. Next idea. When I charge $12 a piece for these things, how much money did I bring in? How much revenue did I bring in? $400. My total revenue is the price I charge times the number of units I sell, which here is a price of 12 times 100 units. So my total revenue is $1,200. Okay with that? What's TR? Total revenue. I'll kind of shade that in this way. And then a term that I use, it's the total value received by all of my customers. And that's their total revenue that they paid me plus the consumer surplus that they didn't. So my total value received by my customers was $1,600. Terminology, okay? Total revenue plus consumer surplus equals total value received. So. Mathematically, looking at the graph, calculating consumer surplus shouldn't be a big deal, right? You okay with that? That's pretty, pretty much eighth grade. Where I came from. Here's a bigger question. You got yourself a little store here, and you're making $1,200 in sales every day. And some smart ass economist comes by and says, Yeah, but you could be making $1,600. People were willing to pay you $1,600 every damn day. You're giving up $400 every damn day. How much is that in a month? If you were only open 20 days a month, that's $8,000 a month going out of your store. What's the matter with you? Would you like to get some of that money? We may not can get all of it, but if we could get half of that $8,000, what could you do with $4,000? You could pay your bill down at... Cafe Risque. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or wherever. Okay, pick your place. Hold on, I kind of forgot my question. <laughs> um, but if you were charging a certain price, like say twelve dollars for like months, and then all of a sudden you go higher, aren't people going to start bu stop buying? As soon as you go higher, you're going to start losing customers. So you can't just suddenly raise the price to everybody. Because yeah, like not everybody will pay for you, and they freak out. Yeah. What you want to do is raise the price effectively to those few people who were willing to pay more. So how do we do that? Make your products sound better so they don't mind paying more? Well, every person has a maximum price they're willing to pay. Each of you do. And I don't know what your or your or your maximum price is. Try to sell them an add-on. Say again? Do you try to sell them an add-on? You bet. If I'm selling lawnmowers, my basic lawnmower is you know, twelve dollars, whatever it is. I'm going to say, and if you want a bagger on it, and if you want an electric start, and if you want it self-propelled, yeah. and hell, we'll paint it red and gold if you like. Okay, yeah. but each of those cost a little more. And if you came in there thinking, well, it's it's selling for a hundred, I was willing to pay three hundred. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll spend a little more and get some of the things I like. I got some of your money. Yeah. Okay, so add-ons is a good idea. Well, I was going to say same thing, the same way they do with fuel. You've got regular all the way to the. You bet. Yeah, and, and to the, the I'm market. really curious. How many people buy 89 or 91 octane? Well, I used right. to have a motorcycle for a bike. Day, for a bike? Okay. Yeah. You have to be kind of. Okay. But not Other than that. Or if you have like a turbocharged car. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Or, or if you're really worried. Huh. Cheap but gas is bad or something. My truck's running fine. Okay. Okay. Let's do another scenario. I've got a sporting goods store, and I'm, I've got a new display out here, and it has three knives in it. Okay. Just. Just folding knives. And there are three different knives. There's a $39 knife, a $29 knife, and a $19 knife. If you come into my store and I say, hey, I'll be right with you, and I let you go look around, and you're standing over there looking at those knives, and I walk over to you and say, hey, I see you're looking at my knives. I just got this display in there. Some pretty nice things. Let me show you one. Which one should I show you? The $39 one. The $39 one. Anybody else have a different thought? I think you should show them 
the $20 one. The $29? Higher $29, yeah. Why? Because you can see if, yeah, because then we can try and talk them up to the other one, or if they say it's too expensive, the other one That's the traditional approach by a lot of retail stores, mm -hmm. is to say, show them the one in the middle, engage their reaction, and see if you can trade them up. And if they're really negative, you know, they'll ask you to look at the other one. And at least you make the sale. Yeah. Kyle, you're shaking your head. Well, I, I work in sales, and, and the way that we, that we approach it is we, we assume that everybody's capable of purchasing the most expensive one. Otherwise, you're not only um, cutting yourself off there, but you're also prejudging your customer. Good. If, if, you, if you automatically assume that everybody can afford the most expensive one, then everybody's on the same playing field. So, like, for example, I walk in, I work for a high quality kitchen company. lady came up and prejudged me right away and she was just like, can I help you kind of like kind of get you out of the store? And so I knew all her product better than she knew it. And so I just, I, I went to town on explaining what I like and all of a sudden she just perked right up like, oh, this kid knows what he's talking about. And I could, had a feeling like she was going to close the sale. I would kind of wanted to be sure because she, she started it on me. And then it's I, real tempting. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, okay. Well, I, I think I'm going to go uh, to the store right now. But I basically just walked out and had her believe me. But the thing is, she automatically assumed that I wasn't capable. Oprah Winfrey had that that experience here recently. You recall that? Uh, I forgot where she was in. in Italy or somewhere? She went into a store she, yeah, looking at some handbags, and the person said, Oh, well, you can't afford that. No, that's not what happened. <laughs> that's the way I heard it. No, exactly. Because she had the media around her pinky. And and what so what, what really happened? They never take that bag down for any customer, and she was trying to pull the Oprah Winfrey card, and they were like, well, we can't take it down. Maybe the girl worded it improperly, but Ooh. that was the actual scenario. Okay. So, so she, she got, she, yeah, she was, she was upset because, yeah, no, she was upset because she couldn't use her um, clout to get what she wanted. Okay, my basic problem with the issue is if you've got something up in your store for sale, Mm. And I want to see it. You should be killing yourself to get that in my hands. Mm. 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 That simple store. I went to Pizza Hut one day and they had a little mini pizzas on sale. Mm. And I said, I'd like one of those, but add some mushrooms to it. I'll pay you for the mushrooms. Mm. Well, we can't do that. Mm. What? We can't do that. That's not part of the special. Mm. I'll pay for them. Oh, no, we can't do that. Mm. I spent two years in this class telling mm. that story to every class. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. They're, they're not there anymore. Yeah. I like to take part of the credit for that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, Wait, you're talking about the one that's up? The one you? on 43rd. Oh, okay. used to be on 43rd. Yeah, yeah. There's a Cedar River there now. We'll get more into that in a minute. Um, my belief, like Tyler, is when, when you show somebody particularly something tangible, mm -hmm. you show them the top end that, that you can. And with, with knives, as an example, if I put that $29 knife in your hand, first thing you're going to be aware of is it's a pretty, pretty nice knife. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to be locked and loaded with some questions for you as we go along. I'm going to be very gentle. But I'm going to ask you, for example, are you buying this knife for yourself or is this a gift? Mm -hmm. What have I just done? I put a landmine right in front of you. I just want you to take one step because the first time you tell me, Oh, this is a gift? Yeah. Really? Who for? Yeah. My daddy. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What's the occasion? Yeah. It's his birthday. Yeah. Oh, this looks like a lot of money for a knife. So, well, you know, yeah. let me show you the, 19, the $29 knife. Yeah. And, and you'll pick it up. And what's the first thing? Instinctively, you'll see. You'll see the difference. Yeah. The cheaper knife doesn't have the nice uh, yeah. case. Doesn't have as many blades, mm -hmm. this or that. And then I've got my killer question for you. Mm -hmm. it, it's a $10 difference. You said your dad? And if you if you're not yeah. bright enough to be ashamed, yeah. I'll rub it into you. Yeah. You know, a ten dollar difference yeah. in these knives. Yeah. And knowing your father, I expect that uh, yeah. he's taught you well. He's going to keep yeah. this knife for 20 years. Yeah. That's about 50 cents a year mm -hmm. for your daddy. Yeah. 
<laughs> so my goal is to get every bit of the consumer surplus from you. I can. What do you mean, Tara? <laughs> would you like me to be your employee? Sell them ice cream? Yeah. I wouldn't sell them ice but yeah, sure. Uh, what if you're the father? Uh, you enjoy their quality of that a little bit more. I mean, sure. basically what you, what you did is you went, let me show you the best. And, and then you have to sell the person on why that is the best and why it's working. True. Yeah. I mean, but if they don't have enough to purchase it, you've either lost a customer or... What do we know about just about every buyer? Yeah. If they want it bad enough, they'll find a way yep. to buy it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happens in car sales? <laughs> what happens in car sales? If you're looking at a, at a car on my yeah. used car lot, mm -hmm. and I can see you really like it, but it's a little more than you want to pay, yeah. how, do I, how do I get you there? Extend your payments. Um, Why don't you keep it overnight and bring it back? Oh, God. If you take those keys, what? So, you're my bitch. <laughs> I got you. One, one, you'll fall deeper in love with the car, and two, for a lot of people, not some of the people in here, a lot of people, they'll feel morally obligated. This guy's been so nice to me. I know I can find an extra $1,500. Yeah, no. <laughs> you wouldn't be saying that if you owned the business. Yeah. No, of course it's not. It's just the way they work, people. Yeah. But people also work the system, so. Yeah. Another thing is called price lining. You walk in the store and there's lawnmowers for sale, and there's nine of them, and yeah. each one has a different price. Yeah. And that's for you to walk in and say, well, I was going to spend $200. Let's see, $100. That's probably a cheap piece of garbage. Uh, $300 is way more. Oh, there's mine. Whereas if they'd all been up there for $100, I'd have never got that money from yeah. So we price line, we, we use personal selling and sales technique, techniques. Another way is, if this was one customer who likes to buy 100 of these things at 12 bucks a piece, 100 cases of ammunition, I could tell him, look, I got a deal going. I can sell you 100 cases for $12 a case if you buy a membership. Your membership will cost you $400. Called two part pricing. Yeah. And if you were willing to spend all that money, I got you. Maybe I just charge $150 for membership. I still got $150 more from you than I would have got just charging you straight $12. Mm -hmm. Okay? So there's a lot of the, the, the old title for this course used to be called Price Theory. Mm -hmm. And it's really related to marketing and sales. And it's how we can use prices to maximize our revenues. And did I, did I put a gun in your head and say, you have to buy it? No. <laughs> mess with my head. Yeah. Maybe mess with me. I get paid for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, All right, you doing okay? I can throw this at you. You can calculate it. And you can talk about what it is and how to get it. Right? Mm -hmm.